Chamber of Commerce has obviously uh, represented corporate interests. Um, Tom Donahue is the head of it. Uh, what are your feelings on him? I think that the Chamber of Commerce should stick to what they do, commerce. I think they should stay out of government. And I think that it's very funny to me that when they weep about regulations and taxes, you know, they always find some extra money lying around to buy some politicians with. It almost seems to me like if we raise their taxes, we would limit their ability to buy this democracy. And I think that's what they fear most. Now, the Chamber of Commerce was very intent on uh, getting rid of laws that would allow you to bribe public officials. Does that not speak to exactly what their agenda is? I mean, if you're pro-bribery, if you think our bribery laws are too rough, it kind of shows that you're pro-bribery. So I think the Chamber of Commerce should stay out of politics, stick to business, and stop misrepresenting the small businesses that you claim to represent. Because if you're carrying water for Bank of America, then you're hurting the mom and pop store down the street. If you're so hell-bent on doing Wall Street's bidding, or Walmart's bidding, then how does the guy who has a, you know, a hand store next door, or maybe has like a hardware store or something like that, how are you helping him when you're helping outsource our jobs overseas, when you're helping destroy the infrastructure that we need to invest in in this country? I think that the Chamber of Commerce does a major disservice to those small businesses that drive our economy when they place the needs of the powerful over the needs of the many. And I think that it's a really good example of a market issue that we should discuss because every advantage we give to these multinational corporations is a disadvantage that we put these small businesses in. And when the Chamber of Commerce comes out and they claim to speak on behalf of small businessmen, you know, they're not speaking on behalf of small businessmen. They're taking money from big businesses and using that to transform it into political speech. And the way I see it is speech is free, not paid speech. I'm giving you free speech. No one's paying me to tell you what I'm talking about right now. If someone were to hand me $100,000 and say, hey, why don't you put in a good word for Bank of America? At that point, I become corrupt. Now, if that's what they do as a business model, then their business model is corrupt and they're corrupt themselves. And I think the Chamber of Commerce should be very much placed under the same rule of law as everybody else. So you know what, if they're pro-bribery, maybe we should look into their books. Maybe we should see where their funding's coming from. And the fact that they fear that more than anything else really speaks to the dishonesty that they're involved in. Because, you know, honesty is the best policy. Sunlight is the best disinfectant. And if they're fighting to keep honesty and sunlight out of our system, then it shows us in how inherently corrupt they are. Great. Um, now, the media, I know you were talking about uh, Andrew Breitbart. But uh, up in New York, there's a guy named Rupert Murdoch, uh, runs News Corp. Um, how do you feel about Fox News and all that? You know, I made a friend in London recently, and we have a bet going. Whichever nation puts Rupert Murdoch in jail first, the other guy owes the other guy another pint. Um, <laughs> To me, Rupert Murdoch has decided that if he spends billions of dollars in Australia, in the UK, in America, in Europe, if he spends billions of dollars fighting for an unjust system that cuts his taxes, it's worth it to him. Now look what Fox News really sells. Racism, lies, smears, misrepresentation, uh, conflict. They're not interested in the truth one bit. They're interested in smearing anything that opposes them and propping up anything that serves them. So I called them the propaganda wing of the Republican Party for a very good reason. That's exactly what they are. And I'll continue calling them the propaganda wing of the Republican Party until they start serving the interests of everybody. Because if you really want to go to Fox News and learn about how violent black people are or how terroristic and socialistic and Nazi like Democrats are and I don't want to leave Democrats out of this because they do have a lot of things I disagree with but when they run offense and defense for a political party they are no longer journalists they're political operatives I mean look at the people on their payroll Karl Rove they had what five six presidential candidates from the Republican Party on their side how many Democrats do they own it turns out the only Democrats they own are the same Democrats who were so beholden to the special interests that they could no longer serve office anymore people got tired of them so I think what Fox News does is operate a multinational crime syndicate I mean the reality is they spy on people's cell phones they hack into people's voicemails Fox News hacked into the voicemails of 9-11 victims. How dare these people talk us into a false war in Iraq based on lies that were uh, created by torturing people. Totally unconstitutional. Even Ronald Reagan was against torture. You know, he signed the UN treaty that banned torture. So when they say that they're doing things in the name of Reagan, in the name of liberty, in the name of freedom, well, you know what? They're not. They're totally serving the wealthy interests who are exploiting Americans. They are totally sowing the seeds of discord that divide us from one another. And I think that's what they really fear. They fear the idea that people of different sexual orientations or gender or people of different religion or people of different uh, creed 
creed or nationality. They fear us getting together and having an honest conversation. So when they run smears against Muslims, I find that to be racist. When they call people anti-Semitic because they don't agree with a far right-wing ideology, I find that to be racist. When they call the African-American president a racist who hates white people and white culture, I find that to be racist. And they can only continue to be racist for so long, it stops when we start calling them out for it. You know, I like to joke sometimes with my friends, like the only thing these guys really get mad about is being called racist, but then you look at what they do and the company they keep. I mean, they have a industry that's built around Islamophobia. They bring on hosts who are literally listed as hate speakers, who are involved with hate groups. You know, I kind of call Fox News the two minutes hate, only they're on a 24-7 cycle, and I think what they do is they divide and conquer. They divide Americans from standing together and pushing this country forward, and they divide people from seeking social justice. They try to keep us divided and at each other's throats, and they're very good at it. So I think Rupert Murdoch needs to be brought to justice the same way a lot of these other players in the financial system and the free, uh, private market have uh, corrupted the public sector and our public officials. And to me, it really kind of encapsulates everything we were talking about, because they are really the corporatist face of America. What they've done is they've taken a private industry, news, and they've used it to influence public opinion in a way that supports only the wealthy and powerful. So when I use the term corporatism, I think Fox News is the face of corporatism, and I honestly encourage everybody to turn that channel off and throw away the remote and just block it from your TV, because... You know, I, I talk to people sometimes about subliminal messages. Subliminal messages are illegal. But what Fox News is, is a long-term subliminal message. They pound the same, just false meme into your head until a few people believe it, and then they turn the cameras on those few people and they declare them a majority. You know, where are these guys when police are acting violently against unarmed protesters? Where are these guys when people who are unemployed are struggling to look for work? They don't care about that stuff. They care about twisting everything they can into a way to blame Democrats, to blame their political opponents, to smear people who are honest. And I guarantee you, if I keep up what I'm doing, they're probably going to badmouth me too, but you know what? I'm ready for it because I don't back down to cabins. Great. Now, um, the Koch brothers uh, seem to have your ire. Uh, can you talk about um, what, how you feel about the Koch brothers? I know you mentioned them as far as Clarence Thomas, but um, uh, can you go into a little more deep? You know, I believe in democracy. Some people say that this country is a republic. Some people say it's democracy. Whatever term you want to put in, it's based on the fact that you have one vote per person. What David Koch and Charles Koch would like to do is turn this into an oligarchy, to turn it into an authoritarian country where whoever has the most money has the most power. That's not what I believe in. That's not what America stands for. So David Koch buys politicians. He ran for president once. I think he ran as a president and they decided to be vice president back in 1980. And I think what he figured out was that he can just buy state officials, buy public officials, then he doesn't need to run for office. He can own a hundred congressmen if he just bribes the right guys. You know, there's a congressman in Kansas, I can't recall his name, but they asked him about his association with David Koch. And he gave this speech which was like literally out of a commercial for Koch Industries. I mean, it really makes me laugh that a guy who sells product that, that you wipe your behind with is the one that's telling everybody else what to think in this country. The the reality is David Cole can't buy America and it seems to me like he's the kind of guy who would rather destroy America than not be the richest guy in it. So David Cole to me is another one of those faces of corporatism. If he can't own it, he's willing to destroy it and what he's doing is selling America's downfall wrapped in a flag carrying a cross. I mean, how badly do we need coal? Why can't we transition into more sustainable green jobs? Why can't we transition off of this fossil fuel? David Koch wants to end all regulations because he wants to blast out pollution and not have to clean it up. He wants to create a problem for America like pollution and let the public clean it up. Now, it's funny because the same guys like to cry about socialism all the time, but when it's us paying their bills, they're fine with it. When we ask them to contribute to our society and clean up their oil spills and clean up for their coal mine disasters, oh my goodness, it's socialism. You know, these are the guys who always talk us into war, but they never want to pay the bill. The larger point with David Koch, with Charles Koch, with the Walton family, with Rupert Murdoch, with Mayor Bloomberg, is that they really feel that since they have all the money, they should have all the power. And that might have worked for the patricians in Rome, and they may want to take us and turn us into the plebeians of America, but I'm not going to allow it. And I think David Koch should be very scrutinized by the media. And it really shows me that who's on their side is the people who never blame him for anything.